have part two of the double header from KLM 1187. And this time, we have another Saturday morning cartoon classic. Bucky O'Hare for the NES. Sit back, relax, and let's go fast. <coughs> All right, thank you again, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, I'm back. Uh, this time I will be writing uh, Bucky O'Hare for the NES. Uh, joining me on commentary for this run, um, I have, uh, if you guys want to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Dan the VP. And I am Hard Made Easy, may also be referred to as Nick if you hear that. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, so they'll be handling uh, most of the, the talking throughout the run here. Uh, this will be a little different than the Bucky O'Hare as you're used to at GDQs. Uh, this will be normal mode instead of hard mode, so um, we will not die in one hit, uh, which is good. Good for me, anyways. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started here. Um, so let me just get to the main screen here, and time will start here in uh, 3, <coughs> 2, 1, go. Yeah, so as said, this was initially a comic in the mid 80s but then it was a cartoon in the early 90s and the background for the story for this but all you need to know is there's a bad robot named complex and he has sent the toad air marshal to come in and capture bucky so the game actually starts you don't have any of your friends you have four other friends in this game and so we are going to each planet uh to find each of our friends so this is the green planet and we need to find uh the Robot Blinky, who is our, uh, I think it's, he's like, a, not the first mate, but he's just one of the, the people in the crew. And so Green Planet's going to be, you know, a lot of nice, easy platforming if we see KLM perform it at least. Yeah, it's a really good introduction to just the, the mechanics of the game. It's your normal Mega Man-esque kind of platformer. We're gonna see a little time save here. You're supposed to go up on top. Oh, I waited, I waited a little too long. Okay, so we were supposed to jump on the log there. We'll be back to that point <laughs> soon. I was thinking about there's a there was a new um, a newer strat found where you can actually go to the top or out there to save a little bit of time. Uh, for some reason, I was just I was thinking about that in my head and I just forgot to jump on the log. So <laughs> yeah, KLM was trying was thinking about going for that harder strap, but it is like. You can do everything perfect and still miss it. It's what's called like a sub-pixel level strat where even if you are pixel perfect, it can still not work sometimes. So it's probably smart not yeah. to try for that one in the marathon. Well, now I wish I almost did because uh, I died anyway. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> You're also going to see Kalen picking some uh, life tokens up here. <clears throat> so the life bar is going to go up, which will, uh, since this is normal mode, we'll be able to use those damage boosts a little bit more and save a little bit of time. And those power-ups stick with you through on each character as we unlock them. This is one of the worst screens because anytime you take damage from one of these laser beams or the, the bullets that they shoot, you kind of get stunned a little bit. So if you're in mid-air, you will definitely drop down one of those pits. Yeah, so right down the pit. This first boss, you pretty much just need to... Sit around and avoid stuff in the beginning, and then when he does charge to the sides, you can pound a lot of shots into him. You do turbo is mashing in this game, so you do want to get there, there's there's an optimal distance to be away, and then you just mash as fast as you can. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a that was a really quick kill, and can't really tell. But, yeah. <clears throat> So now we got our first friend, and we're gonna go off to Blue Planet. We're gonna use Blinky to destroy some of these blocks that we wouldn't wouldn't have been able to get through otherwise, and uh, enjoy the ice physics of Blue Planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're doing a lot of uh, ducking, like uh, deliberate ducking to stop your uh, momentum on the ice here coming up. So. So, yeah, it is also. Go ahead. It's worth noting that uh, Blinky's got a, a smaller hitbox, and all the characters we're gonna use have unique hitboxes, even though this was a you know, NES game, you might not see that all the time, but it, it comes in handy quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going off to get uh, Jenny, the pilot and first mate. She, I, I love how this is totally an original cartoon. She is from the planet Aldebaran, 
which is totally not close to anything else that people have, have listened to before. Never. Whoa. But we pick up Blinky and Jenny first because overall they are the most useful. Jenny's used in a lot of the boss fights. Blinky is used in a lot of areas where you want to be able to shoot down or like Dan was saying, there's a couple spots where having a smaller hitbox actually does help. In this part of the stage, you just need to sit here. The bombs will slowly take out the sides of the iceberg. Obviously, they're not that smart. They probably should have just taken out the middle. But yeah. eventually, we'll get it down enough where the, it'll just float off screen. You can also... A donation or two, you could probably yeah. do as well. I'd be glad to. KT Balrog sends in $10. It says, I've been watching GDQ for years, and this is still the first time I've been able to donate. Thanks for the good times and good luck to all the runners. Save the animals. Is that still a thing? It's kind of appropriate. I mean, there's like a rabbit. Oh, go ahead. We got a rabbit and a duck, so... <laughs> May I keep going? Yes. All right. $25 from Rotumba. I look forward to this event every year. I appreciate the event and everything it accomplishes. Uh, Keep up I'll, a good I'll, cause. Yep, I'll do better. Yep. All right, on the boss of Blue Planet, these are, um, it's a pattern here where Kalen's going to be dunking and jumping to avoid all of these rockets and the floor coming up on you because you will get frozen in that not jumping should uh take him out before we get to the uh, spike screen up here everything goes well yeah, it's a pretty simple pattern you just need to get used to it and then mash a whole bunch mash a whole lot yeah. it's gonna be one of the last mashing bosses because we are gonna get Ginny, and it's gonna kind of change up our boss we're gonna we're gonna level up the boss kills after this <laughs> yeah No, oh, that happens. That happens if you don't, uh, you have to basically move right away here and not slow down at all. If you slow down even like a fraction of a second, you're gonna get caught by that fireball there, but not huge deal. Now, it should be noted, changing, you can change characters on the fly like that, uh, pressing the select button, and it can also be pretty difficult to just get all of the switches while maintaining all of your movement all of the time. We'll probably talk a bit about the power-ups for each of the characters. So each character has a unique ability they can use. You see that little power bar on the bottom. KLM is going to pick up some, like, power enhancers. You can see Blinky's bar is a little further along. It's it's bigger. You can end up getting a couple for each character, and, and that lasts. That means their power will last for a little bit longer. Uh, Bucky. Yeah, going to deliberately grab one here with Jenny. We need her to get the full power as soon as possible. Yeah, her power is essentially this orb that can just chew through a lot of bosses. Blinky will do like kind of a horizontal diagonal jump and Bucky gets a little bit of air time. I think Bucky's is definitely the weakest, although it is still useful at yeah. times. Um, yeah. And then Deadeye, who we're going to see soon as well, he uh, will be able to grab onto walls, which is actually quite useful later on. So KLM's taking a bunch of damage through this uh, these last couple of screens on purpose because there's a death warp coming up where he's going to try to die, fall on a rock, and hit a screen transition that'll take him straight to the boss. Um, this one's not as much of a time loss if you don't make it, but it, it's a big part of the run. And Red Planet is pretty tough, so... Yeah. Hopefully. Not this this. You gotta time everything and line it up all right to get the uh, to bait the shot at the very end. So there we actually okay, saw Blinky's good. special ability getting over that chasm, and there we go. Here we can see the power of Jenny here. And that was the boss. We melt away that boss before we can even have time to talk about it. <laughs> Ah, oh, I'm really relieved that I got that death. I word. still don't know what that boss does. <laughs> it's the only the only thing that you really need to watch out for when you're using Jenny's ability is if she takes damage, it will re it will stop, and you need to kind of recharge. Yeah. So that can be a hassle. 
The ball is... That will be relevant uh, as a, sometimes on this boss and then on a uh, later boss as well. Yeah, the ball, the, the ball of energy is not uh, very easy to control natively. Gotta get used to wiggling the D-pad a little bit to get it to go where you'd like to go. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's actually pretty tough to control at first. Kalem is actually, like, intentionally taking damage through these first couple screens. He wants to get down to two life, if he can, at the end of this screen, because he's going to set up another death warp here. And this is the big one. This is the, you know, skips more than half the stage. Oh, yeah. If anyone's played this game casually before, it knows, like, the infamous, like, roller coaster section. Yeah, this is a roller coaster auto-scroller, which is just awful. The analogy is really slow, but it's, uh... See more of what Ginny can do here with the uh, this ball. Take that ball still really quickly. Yeah, you can do that in one, you know, in one cycle basically with one uh, energy ball there. It's very tough though. I think I've only gotten it like one time, um, but that's that's just as good. And so naturally, now that we've gotten all four of our friends, they are instantly taken from us and they are put in jail. <laughs> yeah. So now we are going we go to the prison again. to save them again. Yes. We take a couple donations here while we watch this cutscene. Definitely. The creatures of the forest are here to help you out here. I have Squirrel Nutcase that uh, uh, donates $500 and says, let's go nuts, folks. Yeah. Keep it going to beat cancer. Awesome. And Murphy sends in $100 and says, Hard to believe I've been watching for almost 10 years. Keeps getting better every year. Keep up the good work. So this is my favorite level in the run. You really get to start using everybody. You get to swamp back and forth from Bucky to Blinky at the beginning. You really kind of... I, I love these early... Retro games where you really get to swap and use a lot of different uh, teamwork between characters. It arguably has the best music. Oh, yeah, 100%. Gotcha. No, all the, the music in this movie is incredible. Uh, okay. I'm not sure why Blinky wasn't taken. Maybe because he's a robot and they didn't think they needed to, but this is your first. They, the uh, Toad Air Marshal there at the top kind of brainwashes all of your friends to, to think you're an enemy. And so this is just a huge mash fest until you eventually hit Jenny enough. And there you go. And so now, as we kill each of these bosses, or mini bosses, I guess, we do gain control of them again. So we just started with Blinky and Bucky, but we're gonna get them back one by one here. Yeah, and then we'll have, we'll have all of our friends for the last uh, three levels of the game, so. Still Blinky doing the uh, the lion's share of platforming here, partially because he's the one that can destroy these blocks, but also the smaller hitbox. It's nice for avoiding yeah. those spikes. And what's a platformer without some uh, some disappearing Yoku blocks? <laughs> you gotta kind of find your way through this. Of course, Kalen's played this at least once before, so he knows exactly where to go. Here's Willie. I don't know if you've really talked about him much yet this round, but he is one part of the crew as well. He's the engineer, even though I, I don't even think he's a teenager. He's like a super smart kid. I think, yeah, I think in the, the lore, he's uh, like 12 or 13 or so, or in between that. Uh, around that age. <clears throat> he's got a, a charge he's, he's shot. One of the more, more powerful yeah. characters in the game, for sure. We'll see him a lot at the end. He gets his time to shine. And all this is very uh, intricate. You're trying to get the these disappearing blocks to line up. Okay, so this is actually prob probably not intended, but there are a couple pixels you can get set up on horizontally where if you just hold up and shoot, you will avoid everything. Looks like Kalen is really close to it. You might have it now. I was actually lined up wrong there at the start, so I had to take some damage, but should be fine. Yeah. The rocks do damage, the spikes are instant kill, so. Yeah. So yeah, we probably have time for uh, a few donations anyways. Uh, if you want to keep going. I have plenty here. 
Lauren sends in $25 and says, Bucky O'Hare was a big part of my childhood. Thank you for bringing a smile to my face, and thank you to all the runners, staff, and more. And Mr. sends in $5 that says, Longtime watcher, second time donator. Got a raise per January 1st, and mom is a survivor, so I support the cause. And Z, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Z Free sends in $100 that says, Let's go, KLM! <laughs> Uh, we still have time if we have more. Uh, yep, you got it. Serpio sends in $25. <laughs> Watched for many years. Finally got to donate something here. Nothing better to do than to watch ADDQ while painting your tabletop miniatures. Keep up the great work. Ooh. And I have $1,000 from Olympian One. It says, here's my traditional birthday donation to ADDQ. Keep up the great work in the fight against cancer. Let's go. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. So Let's go. <clears throat> We're close to the end now. Right there, the exit sign for us. We get our last friend here. And once again, we are kind of getting up a little bit on there, not being at the bottom because Jenny would have been hit on the last couple bosses if she was standing just right on the floor level. That was actually scary on the Ordo Scroller because I was in the wrong position at least three times, so I actually almost died there, which would have been a, a huge disaster time-wise. Anyway. Yeah, I was definitely not <laughs> mentioning that. Let's just make it more intense, more of a moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean that 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 section's otherwise really boring, so you gotta put some excitement on it. Maybe. <laughs> so now we're coming into the final stages. We're gonna go through the garbage chute, try to escape this ship we've been imprisoned in. This is where things, everything's open, opens up. You have all the, all the characters, all the abilities. And like, it doesn't look like it, but those kind of frayed wires on the ground, there's like four of them in a, in a clump. They will one-shot kill you. These chompers will one-shot kill you. Like, mo a lot of stuff here jumps. will one-shot kill you. Those jumps in the beginning are actually yeah. super tight, too. I almost just died right there. But... <laughs> This part looks really cool, just be just timing your jumps over those guys. Looks tougher than it actually is though. Yeah, they're not just like straight like jumps, you have to, there's, some of them are uh, not full jumps and you have to time them right. So yeah, it's actually really satisfying to do uh, as well. So these little green dudes, see, see there's one on his head, you kind of have to jump into the spikes to get them off and they will kind of mute all of your jumps and, and kind of have you move a little more sluggishly if, if you have one on you. Yeah, and some of those uh, jumps over the gap you can't even make if you have one on, so you have to clear them off. So it's uh, just a little slower there just to make sure. Oh, too slow there. Yeah, that's a common place <laughs> to die here because you got to take yeah. time to get that power coin on Deadeye here because we want to be able to charge up his ability as well. If it looks like it's instant death, it's probably instant death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just because this isn't hard mode, there's still a lot of things that'll kill us in one hit, so. <laughs> These screens you gotta either memorize or get through quickly because the light just completely goes out. This section we're trying to do, do a little, little uh, less than intended strats here to make it quicker than standing on these platforms and jumping over. Isn't too bad. Better than it's done. Heading into the boss. Now this one gets kind of tight. You gotta protect yourself with Ginny from all of these rockets and still put in damage to the toad. If you get hit at all, the ball goes away entirely. And standing underneath it, if you don't get it in time, it's an instant kill. Yeah, you can you can switch to Blinky and Duck though to kind of avoid that. Yeah. But it's dangerous. It, it's very it's dangerous. It. It's dangerous. It's very, very slow. So I'm glad that I didn't have to worry about that. The beginning of this is also another maze. You kind of have to know where you're going, and it's very, very difficult to do these first few screens without dying. So like that is perfectly yeah. reasonable. <laughs> It's worth mentioning for, for all the instant death and all kind of the tricky platforming in this game, on normal mode, like every screen's a checkpoint, you've got all these power-ups that carry over unless you game over, so it, it is 
forgiving in a sense, especially for yeah, a game of it, the age. It is, and it, that's why it's a super accessible speedrun anyways, uh, just because of the, it's really forgiving. Uh, even though it is very challenging, there's a lot of tough platforming. Um, but uh, it, it's super forgiving, yeah. Trying to get through as much of this as, as we can without taking damage. We've got some damage boosts coming up. Kind of, the more health you have, the more time you save. There'll be a lot of damage boosting through these guys, so Caleb kind of jumps over a couple of them to keep some of his health here. And they take out a chunk. Yeah. It's probably the toughest platform section in the game, in my opinion. Yeah. Everybody loves conveyor belts. That's a really tight jump under those spikes. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna utilize Blinky's small hitbox. It's a little slower than like the fastest strat, but super consistent. I'm actually really glad I <laughs> do that in one try. It's probably the, it's probably the screen I practice the most, honestly. Not only is it very fun to do, but it's also one of the hardest, as I said. So, so this this is a series of kind of maze-like rooms here where every second or two it'll rotate 90 degrees you're always going from the middle on the left to the bottom right there you can see an opening that'll eventually kind of rotate too and you can get out but actually it will spit you out into a pit <laughs> yeah you if, you're, if you're not careful wrong. yeah yep yeah i actually messed i missed the exit on that first so i go around again but I would like to do death as if I can. <laughs> yeah, the, the head of these snakes, if you will, are instant death as well. These enemies can spawn, so I'm doing a little, kind of a little bit of a manipulation here to get them out of my way. That's a really tight jump. I'm trying to kind of spawn them and move them back here a little bit so they're not like, completely You annoying. don't want to get hit in the jump, right? Yeah. All right, so we got there. That's pretty good. This is another kind of multi-phase boss we're going to use Ginny on to uh, break down these turrets. Hopefully break down the glass so we can get at the heart of it. Shout out to the mother brain here. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a lot of inspiration from several sources. Yeah, we got the good RNG. Nice. So that, that last phase can either shoot upwards or downwards. If it shoots upwards, you're able to kill it in one go there. If it shoots downwards, you're going to take a hit, and then you have to charge another shot. But, yeah. My bad. <clears throat> yeah, so this yeah. level, it's one gigantic <laughs> auto-scroller. Um, things you need to know, Willy does the most damage, so we use him a lot. Um, the... It will get faster in points, but it does tell you where to go with some arrows, so it's not too bad. We probably have a minute or two where we could do some more donations. My pleasure. I have a good one here, KLM. Maybe you can uh, relate to this one here. Hauser sends him $50 and says, Hello, everyone. First time donating. I had to do it during Bucky O'Hare run because it's my favorite game from childhood. Funny stuff, I was stuck for several days at the Blue Planet after completing every other planet because I did not know that you can switch between characters. Imagine my surprise oh, no. when I accidentally press the select button and switch to another character. Good luck to all the runners. Oh, I can definitely sympathize with that, yeah. <laughs> $100 from Hollander Cooper. Amazing runs for an amazing cause. Thank you so much to everyone involved in bringing this event to life. Let's go! I was going to say, if it makes you feel better, uh, even knowing how to switch characters and actually how to get through the stage, I still get stuck in the blue planet all the time, so... I have $28 from Lilac Fishy, donating $28 on my 28th birthday. Happy birthday. I'm so excited to be spending the day enjoying AGDQ. And I have $50 from Gappy. I've seen GDQ events in the past via the official YouTube, but this year is the first I've decided to come live and I've been able to donate. Can't wait for y'all to obliterate cancer. $10 from Crystal Wind. Yes, my childhood favorite, Bucky O'Hare. I still love this game, but I can't wait to see this game 
destroyed. Thank you for all... Let's try that again. Thank you all for this amazing event and greetings from Finland. Thank you, Crystal Wind. Okay, so here we are at the first of uh, three bosses here on this stage, and there is there was a new strat that was just kind of discovered to make this quick kill a little more consistent. Um, a little faster, too. Uh, shout out to Sidetrack Kid for finding this one. Uh, I didn't really get it fully there, but it was uh, definitely faster than it used to be. So. The last phase of this is just crazy. You just need to, to have your movement on to be able to keep it in this, this head. It's like an interactive uh, yeah. DVD. Good old menu. DVD logo boss. <laughs> so we'll get a life pickup and um, some extra lives before each of these bosses coming up. And uh, the next boss is a process and... Uh, it's a little bit easier now with new strats to get through at first try. If you don't, uh, this whole sequence plays again, and it's it's just one big auto scroller. So the, the one cycle is really necessary. Yeah, so it used to be a lot harder, but uh, again, I just want to shout out another one. Uh, so I just want to shout out to Junkyard Dave for uh, kind of workshopping this as well to make this uh, just al almost 100% consistent for normal mode anyway. Uh, we actually, we're doing like the hard mode strat at the beginning here to make sure we take as, as little to no damage as possible. That way I can get set up here. There's a very specific horizontal position I need to be in here. And a specific shot uh, spot to be shooting here, so that looks perfect. Yeah. So now that I've saved all that health, I can actually just sit here. Where nor the, the old strat was you have to go up and down, making sure you're in the right position. Also hitting the same spots there. But it's just, and now it's just uh, basically free, so. Coming up on the final boss here. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a new, new fight for this for normal mode as well. You're just utilizing the fact that you can take damage to make this fight a lot faster. So hopefully we'll get it in one go here. I'm gonna try to stay up as close as you can. Stay inside of his hitbox so we're still doing damage. Yeah, that lava on the left side is also instant death, so... Oh. I'll have to switch here. Bucky does yeah, shoot. What time will be once we lose uh, control here? That's time. Awesome run. No oh, GG. What's the time on that? I don't have the stream open. Uh, one sec, we're just confirming that. Oh, wow. Nice. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, that actually went uh, a whole lot better than uh, I was hoping once did. Um, we didn't get the PB like I was talking about earlier, but that's okay. Um, maybe <laughs> next time. Uh, yeah, maybe next time. Um, well, that's Bucky O'Hare Normal Mode, guys. I uh, hope, you, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks again for all those donations coming in. Um, thanks again for, for Dan and uh, Nick for joining me. If you guys want to take a second just to, to, to plug yourselves really quick. Go follow KLM on Twitch. <laughs> uh... Yeah, thank you guys. Um, I, again, shout outs to uh, the, the Bucky O'Hare the speedrunning community. Uh, Junkyard Dave um, has put in a ton of work in the, the hard mode. He's just recently, uh, you know, has a killer time in uh, normal mode as well. Uh, Sidetrack Kid is a newer runner to the game, but he's, he's an incredible speedrunner in his own right, so um, he's killing the game as well. Um, and then, the, you know, the existing runners too, like, like Callum's world records in both categories are just are. Uh, Almost untouchable. Um, definitely worth a watch. Uh, the Retro Runner as well is another normal speed runner, uh, normal mode speed runner uh, that you guys should all follow too. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that covers it for my shoutouts here. Thank you. Uh, thanks again to uh, to GDQ for letting me do these runs here. Um, I, I do have one more coming up uh, in just a little bit, but um, there's awesome runs in between there, so don't go anywhere. Uh, stick around. Uh, the NES block continues next. Thank you. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. If you're just joining us this morning, my name is Super Jamoose. Come on in. Sit right down. You're just in time for the classic Nest Block, and there's still plenty of gaming left this morning and all week long. And coming up next, we have Vonnie Vaughn and Gargoyle's Quest 2. But for now, we have some donations to be read. 
$50 coming in from Apple Mac, who says, another 25 Here you go. Actually, take another. Nine to Neil sends in twenty-five dollars. Says coffee and AGDQ Nintendo games. What a great, what a way to start the workday. I agree. Jackazam sends in one hundred dollars and says, "Good morning, friends. I love you all. Keep being awesome." Anonymous sends in one hundred dollars. GDQ is so awesome. Thank you to all the tech team. And Parker sends in $50, another year, and another great AGDQ marathon. Good luck to all the runners this week, and I'm looking forward to watching the runs. I think I like this one here. Very, very simple. $15 coming in from McLunky Culkin, hmm, who simply says, lamp. Lamp? Now, wait a sec. That, isn't that something that we can do? It seems to me if you have Prime Gaming, you can you can link yourself into that and you can get that that mighty emote, the mighty lamp emotes. All you got to do is set up your Prime Gaming, set it up so you can subscribe. You got lamp. Corduroy sends in $25, says, good morning, AGTQ. We have more forest friends. Happy Cow sends in $52 and says, You're all beautiful people, and I love you. Moo! And being told we're being sent to a quick commercial break, we'll be right back with more AGDQ. Devolver Digital presents Serious Sam, Siberian Mayhem, co-developed by Timelock Studio and Crow Team, published by Devolver Digital. It launches on January 25th. Serious Sam, Siberian Mayhem took an unusual path, starting as an ambitious project from longtime Serious Sam community modding team, Timelock Studio. It quickly evolved into a standalone expansion under the guidance of Crow Team. And you can check out the mayhem at devolver.link slash Siberian Mayhem.
Welcome back, everyone. Time to send us off to the interview team. We have Vonnie Vaughn to tell us all about his upcoming run. Let's have a listen. Hello, everybody. I'm Fiesel, and I'm here with Vani Vaughn, who will be running Gargoyles Quest 2, which is coming up soon. So welcome, Vani. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's get right into it. So um, this run has had um, some recent changes to the route, some, some new things added to it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what's new here? Yeah, absolutely. I know this is, was run in a Games of Quick event maybe about like five or six years ago, but uh, it actually went through a rather, uh, got some new life breathed into it uh, by a very, very good speedrunner by the name of Overswarm, who took a hold of this route, reimagined a lot of things, um, which we'll talk about in a second, and uh, smashed a world record time that had been standing for years by another fantastic speedrunner by the name of White Hat. And so this was a game that I had run before, but then with the recent route changes, I became inspired to come back and, and try and get it and uh, try and get a much better time. And, and the new route changes are, are great, and I'm really looking forward to showing those off. All right. Well, uh, so tell us, what, uh, what exactly is going to be new here? So what are the route changes? So one of the big things that we do in the Run for Gargoyles Quest 2 is there's going to be two intentional game overs throughout the run and we do these at select checkpoints so that we can skip like minutes of backtracking now in order obviously to get the game overs you need to lose all of your lives so one of the big changes is where we take those intentional deaths um, before we kind of took two in one clump um, and then tried to write out an entire section on one life they're going to be spaced out a little more and they're done in strategic sections such or strategic places such that sections of the game are going to be easier or could be done faster because when you respawn you respawn with full life and it allows you to take um you know more advantageous damage boost which is another thing that we do all throughout this run is damage boost all over the place so now we've got better places to take those damage boosts to save even more time so uh, when you picked this game up again, when you kind of came back to it, did you did you yourself notice some new things, discover some new things? Like, how, what was that process like for you? Like adapting this other, uh, you know, other runners' works and merging it with your own. It, it, it's a really cool experience because when I first started it, I was emulating what White Hat was doing, and his run is fantastic. And what Oversworn did with a lot of the rerouting. Obviously, there were some big changes there, but where I came in was kind of somewhere in between where I made kind of a, a little changes when it comes to certain platforming and uh, the way that you that you do certain fights and whatnot to, to you know, just little tweaks here. I mean, the, the fine tuning that's been done on this run is is pretty significant. So the optimization level here is is very, very high. And to see that in you know, to, to still see it in, you know, an NES game, which is 30 years old, that they're still finding a way to really tweak and fine tune things to make the run even faster. It's just really cool to see. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's awesome to be a part of it and to, and to be doing it and especially to be doing it for, for AGDQ. Right. I mean, I hope some new runners get into it because it's kind of like this hidden gem. I think a lot of people were familiar with like the NES game or so mm -hmm. the, uh, the Game Boy game Gargoyles right. Quest and don't really know that it had this like excellent sequel that just like took those ideas and expanded it so much absolutely yeah definitely agree uh so let's say i was like a new runner coming into this or i'm, I'm learning this speed run what do you think i would find to be the most challenging part of the run like what 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 is the real challenge for someone getting into this so i don't know if it's necessarily a challenge but just something that is definitely an adjustment is the movement tech in this game the way that you do the the, the jumping and the floating specifically this is one of the things that i really liked about the run and you know gargoyle's quest its predecessor which i played as a kid growing up and really enjoyed is that the movement tech in this game is very very unique there's very few other games platformers specifically mm -hmm. where you move the way that the character does and obviously we're going to be demonstrating and, ex and exploiting um, a lot of the different things that you can do with the with the flying and, and mm -hmm. the the horizontal floating to you know make section you know where we're skipping over sections where we would normally need to get an item um you know we're we're using that along with damage boosts to skip whole sections of levels all kinds of things like that so i i would say that's the most challenging thing is kind of getting used to a a style of movement 
that there really isn't much of a point of comparison for it, especially mm. in other retro platformers. Yeah, it is kind of unique the way it works with the floating, because like you're floating at a level and then you can drop, you can like release and then re float again to change your level a little bit. So there's all this like subtle kind of like reverse platforming, like as you're kind of dropping down with it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, you know, the, the escalator down, there's one mm. section and it's referred to as the jump because mm. you float along this long section that you're not normally supposed to be able to do the way that we do it. But um, it allows us to, you know, to save a lot of time skipping something you would otherwise have to get. And it's funny because there's a section just like that in the first game as well. They mirror each other mm -hmm. quite closely in that regard for the speed run too. I just, that's, that's pretty cool to see too. All right. Uh, well, before we uh, are out of time here, um, you had some, something else that you wanted to share with us today? I did. You know, I, I was really excited to see AGDQ 2022 starting up. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed was the pre-show. And But specifically, it was what you did, Fiesel, with the uh, with all of the, the poems that you did. You did, okay. many, you did many of the poems with all of the sequels that we had in the games. But I noticed there was one glaring omission. And that was Gargoyle's Quest 2. This is a sequel. So, Fiesel, I got okay. your back. I have here a poem for Gargoyle's Quest 2, uh, all prepared. I just, you know, happened to find this in a book of that course. I had laying around. Right. So um, I'll go ahead and read it for you now, okay? Mm -hmm. This is an ode to Gargoyle's Quest 2, a ghost and goblin spin-off true, where a gargoyle named Firebrand must fight to save the monster's land. He'll need to do so many things, like talking to a lot of kings. He'll fly and float and use his magic to thwart an evil fate so tragic. He'll damage boost to save some time. The iframes allow for strats sublime. <laughs> Deliberate deaths are what you'll see to manipulate boss RNG. Game overs are the sacrifice he'll make to skip doing levels twice. We'll let the run tell you the rest. Please enjoy this sequel to Gargoyle's Quest. Oh. Excellent. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, let's end it on a high note. I don't think we can do any better than that right there. Well, thank you very much, Van Ivan, for talking with us today and for that awesome poem. Thank you, Haber. Thank you very much for having me, Fiesel. Uh, I really hope everybody out there watching enjoys the run, and I hope to see you all there. And until I do, take care, everyone.